very, very wise man, man. Fox 13 News at 9 starts now. I love my child so much and fought for my child while she's here in the flesh, and I will continue to fight for her in spirit. I will not give up until I get justice for her. It's a Mid-South mother taking action tonight to find the person or people responsible for her daughter's murder. Thank you for being with us tonight at 9. I'm Daryl Green. Darcy Thomas is off this evening. 22-year-old Charlisa Reed was gunned down in downtown Memphis back in August. Ten months later, still no charges in this case. Let's go to Fox 13's Jack Billu. He's live at MPD headquarters. Jack, that young woman's mother is now partnering with Crime Stop. Where you at, Angel Reese? This could have been Lisa Reed. Yeah. They Angel ain't gonna find her murderer, man. Look at this, Angel Reese. This could have been you. You could have been, you could have met this same fate, man. Get the word out. Go on your um go on your uh Instagram and um post this and and um information. People were looking for information. Post that. We're looking for information on on who might have killed this woman and post the whole the story and uh what city and all that stuff. Come on, Angel Reese. If Caitlin Clark got an answer for shit white people do, you gotta answer for stuff black people do. Hey, uh, person do you think that's with malice? Huh? Do you think that murder was with malice? This one? This one right here. In particular, oh yeah, it's with malice for her daughter's yeah murder. Thank you for being with us tonight at nine. I'm Daryl Green. Darcy Thomas is off this evening. Twenty-two-year-old Charlisa Reed was gunned down in downtown Memphis back in August. Ten months later, still no charges in this case. Let's go to hey, Fox yo. 13's Jack Bill. You, hey, you gotta mute yourself, man. Please mute yourself when you're not talking. You're making a lot of noise, man. Mute yourself when you're not talking, but thank you, man. Live at MPD headquarters, Jack, that young woman's mother is now partnering with Crime Stoppers, offering a $10,000 reward in this case. Yeah, Daryl, and Crime Stoppers says Reed's mother put up $6,000 of her own money to help find the people responsible. She says that she needs answers, and that seems a small price to pay to put her daughter's killer behind bars. Excruciating, painful, hurtful. A lot of anger because I have no answers. That's Anita Wilkins describing what the 10 months since her daughter was killed have been like. Wilkins says her daughter went out downtown and when Damn, she had some soup coolers, man. God damn. Was killed have been like. Wilkins says her daughter went out downtown, and when she didn't respond to her calls or texts, she followed her phone's location and came to a deadly shooting scene. That's the last thing I thought I was going to pull up on. Invest Yo, that's the second mother that we've done in this episode who could didn't hear from their kid and tracked their phone and pulled up to find them dead in the street. Oh, Man, thank you, God, problem. for $10. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Hey man, um, you making you making my show? Um, you turning my show to a motherfucking goddamn your your rhythm off, man. You gotta get your rhythm up, man. Tracy, man, goddamn man, you making the show uh choppy and shit, fucking up my goddamn vibe, man. My my rhythm. Fuck, man. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, Mark. Go ahead. Uh, you know, that's the great thing about gliders making technology and everything. And, you know, they won't be thankful for that, though. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just, I mean, yo, that is such a terrible thing. I mean, yo, you haven't heard from your kid. You track their phone, you pull up. To where PB this is fucking blaring and whatever you call it, pinging. Yeah, it's pinging. Like it's you, you are here and shit. And there's a fucking bullet riddled car right there and shit. And it's your kid's car. And you approach it and they're slumped over at the wheel, fucking tongue hanging out. Yo, that's, 
Yo, this is this that's insane, man. Shit. Didn't respond to her calls or texts. She followed her phone's location and came to a deadly shooting scene. That's the last thing I thought I was going to pull up on. Investigators say Charlisa Reed was leaving a restaurant on South Main just before 3 a.m. when a gunman in a gray Dodge Charger opened fire on her car, killing her. That Charger was caught on a nearby surveillance. <sighs> Fucking automobiles of death. <laughs> Angel Reese could have been you, baby. Speak out, man. It's camera, but 10 months later, no suspects have been identified. Wilkins says she believes more than one person was involved. I'm ready for answers. I'm ready for arrests to be made, and I'm ready for justice. Wilkins says her daughter was just getting started in her career, and she's constantly remembering her kindness and creativity. We miss her tremendously. She says this senseless crime has left a hole in her heart, and the lack of progress in the case has made her angry. She says her daughter lost her life simply for trying to enjoy herself with a friend in downtown Memphis. We have the right to enjoy ourselves, but it's being ripped away from us due to these kids that are just ter terrorizing the city of Memphis, and it feels like nothing is being done. Finding those responsible won't. Ma'am, I wonder what her what her stance on the Tyree Nichols situation. Did she think they should have got rid of the Scorpion unit? Wasn't no. their job to terrorize the <laughs> fucking thugs? Yeah. Hey, I, I didn't know you had a right to enjoy yourself. Yeah, you don't when you're around sons. When you're around sons, you don't have the right to enjoy yourself. It's a bonus. Now, if it happens, yeah, if they allow you to do that, then yeah. But you ain't. it's definitely not a right pursuit of happiness right listen man sons are a trip man we are bring her daughter back but wilkins is hopeful it'll make sure they can never do this to someone else we need help we need help to find out who did this to my daughter why they did this to my daughter and to make sure it doesn't happen to another family this wilkins says putting up that money felt like the last option she had to help close this case. If you know anything about that killing, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 901-528-CASH. Your anonymous tip. 18-year-old Lorenzo Watson and 21-year-old Kendrick Ray are locked up on $1 million bonds. Like Both are facing attempted murder charges. Look at that. Look at that. Prognathism. Prognathism. Lips How much this was that bond? One million. Yo, don't let the sisters find out. They're not going to like that shit. This is the story we did the other day where the shooting on the highway, where they shot all them kids. Uh, look at these. Look at look at these guys. Think about this. Most sisters, until it happens to them, cape, march, sign petitions, Facebook tweet about criminal justice reform for these type of guys. Police reform, because the police are too rough to these types of guys. Then Why do you leave out having babies by them? Huh? You left out having babies by them? Yeah, and I'm leaving out having babies by them because I'm talking about a dynamic where 39-year-old Rhonda or 39-year-old Melanie, she's she's got kids this age, and she's down with all the BLM bullshit. And she's running around telling her white friends that she's scared when her kids leave the house because she don't know if a cop's gonna pull them over and kill them. That bitch. I'm talking about her. I'm not talking about these dudes' girlfriends. I'm talking about that bitch, that old bitch that's sitting home spreading lies about the police and shit and talking about goddamn a bunch of BLM bullshit on Twitter. That chick, she's okay with this until it happens to her. 
And then when it happens to her, she's mad with the investigation. It's taking so long. She's upset that, you know, that she, she demands answers. And the detective hasn't gotten back to her in time. She's been calling down there and the detective hasn't gotten back to her. That shit. In connection to an interstate shooting that left a father and his four children critically injured. Both appeared before a judge Thursday morning. Watson's appearance was reset. Damn, that's a fucking hard. nostrils, man. That's a hard son, man. I ain't even gonna lie. That son, man, right there is hard. You can see it in his face. He's been through some things. He's seen some shit. He in the he in the hallway when they shooting dice and shit. You know what I'm saying? He in the he in the car when they doing the drive by. Look, nobody make any reference to how he has sort of a simian countenance. That would be way off base. Yeah, man. This one right here, man. God damn. Yeah, that's a that's a um. This is a pr primeval son, man. This is a goddamn. Yeah, this is. He he, is... he look he look like the like the high value for that community. You know, he's like the one that is covered here, right? This is proto for show, though. You okay. think he he be shooting another one? Yeah, man. How many kids you think he had? At least one, right? Oh yeah, him oh, yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a little young on the young side. Yeah, he got a kid. He got a kid. You know, he got baby mommy and shit. You know what I'm saying? He can't stand her and shit. She on his fucking nerves and shit. Always be asking for money and shit. <laughs> Cheating well, on him and shit. <laughs> what was the point of the shooting? Got a baby mom, yeah. <laughs> Rage. Unbelievable, man. These are the guys, man. Since he did not have an attorney at the time, attorney Brandon Hall is representing Ray, who has no prior convictions. Mr. Ray still has his constitutional right to be defended. According to court documents, the father Thanks, was letters. trying to merge onto I-240 <laughs> from Mount Moriah Road, but couldn't because a gray SUV wouldn't let him. Once he okay, got so let's see go, the that's genesis. The cause. Let's see the genesis of this of this inner. Let's see what, what, what sparked this, man right to be defended according to court documents the father was trying to merge onto i-240 from mount moriah road but couldn't because a gray suv wouldn't let him once he got over the person behind the wheel of the suv started driving erratically as it approached the victim's driver's side window reports say the and that's all it took car full of kids it's, it's like the comment earlier i the super chat you cut me off now you must die Yes, exactly. Salute the um, prodigal son, man. He says, doing God's work, fam. Yeah, we doing God's work over here, man. Shout out to you, man. Nobody's doing this. Nobody's covering this. We're going to cover Caitlin um, Clark in a little bit. Yo, yo, matter of fact, yo, John, do you know anyone else, like any besides CT, any other channel that gets into the nooks and crannies of this dilemma we're in as, in, as a nation? Do you know of any other channel, brother? I think didn't Tommy told me you used to do something like this back in the day. Wicked troll, wicked troll, you man. Leave John alone, man. I like. No, I like John. John, John's a man, but look, this is the thing. Well, what he just said, Tommy doesn't do it like this. Tommy, what about the hood conservative? John, he's busy blaming the sisters. Tommy, right? He's busy. Yeah, I heard him today, man. I was surprised to hear him talk like that. Yeah, he's talking about the sisters, and you know what? Yeah. The, we, we got the sisters are an issue for sure, but they're not the issue, brother. It's these clowns that are ruining everybody's life, bro. So, so do you know any other channel and any channel that I'm, 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 I'm honestly asking you, you know? I probably, you know, somebody referred to Ock as uh, the new Colin Flaherty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I ain't never thought about that, but that make a lot of sense. You know what I'm saying? I used to watch Colin Flaherty. I never heard yeah. of him. He used to cover, he used to do like this. Yeah, he used to do yeah. like just the incredible volume of stories yes. where it was mob is, is, is I gave him a dedication. Now he's a collider. I gave him a dedication. So 
so Colin, like, whatever the fuck, he, he really couldn't do it like I've been if he's a glider. He, gotta... he wrote a, I think if I'm not mistaken, he wrote a book back in the day called White Girl Bleed a Lot. Don't make really... like he's angry. Oh, and that, yeah, that oh, one too. Shit. Anyway, those were like influential, you know, when the internet was so, younger. So, John, is it fair to say that no, not really? There's not, I mean, I can't think of I anybody, can't, you know? I can't think of anybody now, now off the top of my head. No, I don't I mean, think I, CT does it like this. Like, I CT, go like hard at it, you know, CT covers yeah, other subjects. The, so. the, the thing about CT, the difference with CT and I is, you know, I does cover other things, but the thing that makes Agnation, at least in my opinion, Agnation is that we're looking at, at crime, right? But when you say crime, it minimizes it because it's more than crime, brother. Mm -hmm. I mean, this incident right here, for example, this isolated incident, yeah, it, it, crime, it rolls off the tongue, right? But it's more than that. This was how many hundreds of thousands of dollars were spent on this one fucking incident, you know, aside from the fact that four yeah. children and one man the were shot. The emotional, you know, tax of it, you know, the hospital and visits for them, the, the gas for all the visits. fucking police cars. I mean, you know, it's been yeah. The, you know, the, the aftermath of it, where like you know, law enforcement has to, you know, they, it's a lot going on. It happens all day, every fucking day, right? And um, so no, I mean, Black Gen Z does it, and you know, I can't. I, so what I can't seem to understand is, you know, I think people take act for granted. I really do. Um. I mean, you look at someone like Tommy, right? And again, I is being hidden by YouTube anyway, right? Like this channel, for obvious reasons, it's not going to be allowed to grow. Because like three years ago, John, I was taking off like a rocket. He was getting fight. He was going up to the fucking stars, brother. And then suddenly and almost immediately, boom, nothing, right? So, I mean, look, I get it. You know what I mean? It's not fair, it's not right, but it does bother me, you know, because... Oh, you know, I can't name one person. Okay. Um, shit, I don't even know if I can say his name on him. Andrew yeah. Anglin. You, you ever read him? Who that? Andrew Anglin. Uh, I've heard the name, man. Yeah. Yeah, the Daily Stone he goes hard as hell, but you know, he, he probably goes a little bit harder to small I'm not, Yeah, I'm not into the fucking, like, you know... I mean... I'm talking about... Know. Pool. I, he's I, a great writer, though, bro. He's a great writer. Oh, can't sure. take from I, I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. I think from a lot of those guys, like the Daily Wires and the ones that talk about this, they they sneakily listen to Ak. They they do. I they have to because Ak is the. I, I just think he's so underground. They probably take some of his talking points. Yeah, thank you, and, Slick. And, and you know what? You know what, though? And this, I, I'm glad somebody made this comment because this is one of like the comments that that I love from people when, when we when this comes up, right? About I'm not growing. Maybe to some extent, the background, I guess, matters, right? To some extent, but that beyond that extent, you this content. It is important, dude, and no one's no one is covering it. Not like this, right? So, I mean, I'm a, like, like if I get a background, right, like a nice dry wall, yada yada yada. Maybe maybe like some kind of like nice Afro aesthetic, you know? Like some people got like that that style, you know? Whatever. How much can I really help them? Can it help them? I don't know. I mean, he's about fifty thousand subscribers. <laughs> At least on YouTube. I mean, you probably end up on a subject like this, you probably end up going deeper and wider. You're gonna have like deep support versus wide support. That'd be my opinion. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know. If, am, am I making sense? How am I making sense right now? I think it's kind of a fucking meme at this point to say that oh, if he gets a green screen or he, you know, finishes the basement, that his subscriber count is gonna. Jump by three billion subscribers, you know. It's yeah. I mean, I mean, maybe it could have some I effect. No, don't do that. It's not. It's. it's I don't think that it. It matters. It but does the, matter. Yeah, I the agree. nitpicking over the basement is curious. I, I to agree. Me. Like, like, like. Sometimes I does. He's too real. Like he doesn't give a fuck, right? Like sometimes he'll be like, I'm when he starts the show, he'll just be there kicking it. 
you know, as opposed to like just jumping. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. incredibly annoying to some people, I guess. Yeah, you know, and, this and, just hit me. Like, what do you think your 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 local news has on on the ten o'clock broadcast? What do you mean? In terms of like people watching. Oh yeah, the the viewership audience. What? How big is it? Yeah, you know, like. I'm sure it's plenty, right? I would think it's we get plenty. about what you know, two hundred and fifty to four hundred a show here. Probably like Maybe five six. But I may do three thousand streams when it's all said and done. You know, how many yeah. people? It may be fifty fifty thousand in a major metropolitan city watching the ten o'clock news. I don't know what the numbers would be, but uh, yeah. I can't imagine. It seems like a lot of people are moving away from like mainstream news. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. But look, man, I definitely, I for one appreciate you know this bubble that I has created, right? Where to some people that are not familiar, they might hear me, and they, and they might, and I always said this: how they might hear me and think, "Oh, this who's this guy who barely speaks English, right?" Or they might hear fishermen and think, "Who is this?" Guy who sounds like he was in the cavalry of Robert E. Lee, you know. <laughs> but at the end of the day, well, uh, the gentleman who has a very poor opinion of glider women, <laughs> right, right? But at the end of the day, I come a diverse group that, to whatever extent, understands this fucking dilemma that we're in. Which it's a, it's quite a fucking pickle, bro. Now you see, I, t- I take that offense to that because I think personally I do a, a better southern accent. Than fisherman <laughs> does, but well, but but the fisherman has like a he sounds like he's like a natural southern. Hey, he's from that I mean? dirty dude. He's from Mobile, so he's he's real yeah. enough. And, and I mean, don't get me wrong, how you you sound fish like been around them. Fish has been around sons, yeah. and he so, knew so something that, was up. Yo, how was from New Orleans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How black knew? How black knows? He's like, whoa. Yeah. There is something wrong with this guy. You said fish is from, you said someone fishing from Mobile? Yeah, he's, he's from, from Mobile, Mobile, Alabama. Oh, yeah. I'm from yeah. North Alabama. And exactly. It's, yeah. Is that, that's not close to Mobile? Is it Mobile? But... Yeah, yeah Mobile's on the coast. Yeah, it's pretty close to New Orleans. So, do you, are you fish familiar was... with the, are you familiar with Fisherman, John? He comes on the, he comes on the, no, the I don't think I'm ever he's a cool dude. He's a cool dude. Just you know, uh, here's a here's a pro tip: don't show any type of love to the Jewish crew. He's gonna get mad at oh. you. <laughs> if you want to become Jewish, though, all you have to do is disagree with him. Right? Then I'll start accusing you. Of being That's Jewish the fast track to a, a yarmulke. Right, right. But <laughs> how's your show? Hold on, hold on, guys. Uh, how's your show going over there? How's your show going over there with CT? <laughs> John Galt show. Fuck yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, we, I like yeah, that. We, he he yeah. lets John get his platform. Yeah, John is the man. No, I, I haven't done the show in a while, but yeah, I, I'm on there a lot. I, I go over the show a lot, yeah. Yeah, we love y'all. But over here, we send you a lot of love, John. We we're from, Some of us are familiar with you. We think we can do a good oh, job. Oh, yeah, you're the only other dude I can stand to listen to almost on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's you know, a language language over there. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a tough show. Over there. But they, you guys are doing my landlord stream. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been doing landlord like twenty years, man. Shit, that's kind of yeah, changed my whole right. opinion about this all this shit. You know, like I'm sure. Yeah, you know, the- these black live, man. Like truly, truly amazing. You know what I'm saying? It used to be woke. Huh? What's that? You used to be woke back in the day. Nah, I never. I've been a landlord of shit pretty much all my life. You know, because your mom, right? Your parents. Yeah, my yeah. parents were landlords, so. I got to see it very early on, like, damn, what the hell is wrong with these people? You know, why they live like this? <laughs> you know, shit yeah. like that. And, you know, but that's as a kid, and you start, you know, connecting the dots. You know, they that's how them. it was for me. But, yeah. But, yeah. but a lot of people can't the... connect those dots, though, John. They can't seem to connect the dots. You remember, like, it's... when we were kids, it would be like those little books. You go to the doctor, like, highlights or something like that. You remember that? Yeah. It'd be like, connection. Hey, I, we were saying someone... Can, Compared you to uh, Colin Flaherty, man. You ever heard that t- comparison before? No, he did a he dedicated a show on him. I, that's, okay. I, I haven't been listening that long to Ark. He did a whole dedication to him. Uh, what you think? I haven't heard what you thought about Colin Flaherty. What did you think about Colin Flaherty? Colin Flaherty was a great man, man. I, I admired him to be a um, to be a glider and to be saying the things he said. And to get um, 
it's different when you're a glider, man. Like, he got kicked off YouTube. Um, he was on Minds.com. He was, um, and he didn't do nothing but report. He didn't give his opinion about what was happening all the time. Yeah, the most Maybe he had was a sort of mocking tone. Yeah, the fellas, or he called them the fellas, or the lovely mm-hmm. ladies. But um, he he, <laughs> and his, he just reported it. He just reported it straight up. And his DNA kicked in because he helped the kid. Helped the kid. Yeah, you no, know? but earlier in his life, he was a, like a reporter or something. Uh, some black kid, you know, case got on his on his desk. You know, some black kid that was wrongfully convicted. <laughs> And he worked DNA. tirelessly, tirelessly to get this black kid out of prison. DNA. And, and, and then, um, exactly. And then later on in life, as he got older, when he started to wake up, he saw f- how much black people like terrorize. Like we literally prey on white people. Um, and he created, he, he 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 tried to undo the wrong he felt he did. You know, that's how I see it. Even though he didn't say that, I feel like he tried to undo the wrong he felt he did by getting that son man out of prison. Wow. I never knew that. that is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Colin Fleur, that's his origin. That's his villain arc. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, he wow. was... Um, but he was he was he was a great man. I got a lot of respect for Colin Flaherty. I think you know, as a, as a glider, when I think about gliders on YouTube, Stefan Molly knew atheism is um, atheism is undefeated, huh? Unstoppable or undefeated? Oh, you whatever it is, yeah. AIU. Those guys to be gliders, their bravery. In those days, too, because we're not talking about now when there's kind of like a sea change going on right now. We're talking about in the thick of it. We're talking about like post Freddie Gray. Nah, mm. post Freddie Gray, post um, Philando Castile, post Mike hey, Brown. Brown. Yikes. Hey, I'll, I'll follow follow it. It. hey I'll, someone in your comments mentioned uh, Anthony Kumia. I follow him. Yeah, he's pretty. He's pretty. Yeah, yeah. no, Anthony Kami is very funny though. He, you know, he goes hard, but he doesn't so, make videos. I think he just is on uh, Twitter. Wait, so he talks about? Okay, okay, gotcha. Uh, he posts a lot of black crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, definitely. There's, I, I see those. Though. I see like the one Asian Don or whatever. Like I see those people on Twitter. Twitter, Twitter is lit for sure. Yeah, definitely. Twitter's, Twitter's yes, definitely. Doug Chunks, man, Ark Nation Hall of Famer. Mount Rushmore says, Ock Nation has nearly one-sixth the followers that Alex Stein has with zero national coverage. That's actually pretty remarkable. Salute to the nation. Uh, yeah, man, you got to, you know, you got to, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what, what is it? Silver lining? <laughs> um, yeah, salute to you, man. Um, definitely, man, got to see the bright side, man. Um Salute to um, Savrix, man. He, he became a member for 13 months. He said, only here, people. Keep it going. Uh, yeah, man, only here, man. We're going to get into the Caitlin Clark question that was asked her earlier today, man, in the discourse online, because that has a lot to do with crime and the crime we see in these cities, the outlandish crime we see in these cities. Savrix says, notice how this transformation of society is under the guise of philanthropy. And in the name of I'm doing a good thing, I suggest more evil has been done in the name of I'm doing a good thing than actual good. I'm you know what? The baseline of Savrics. My thing about that, though, is, okay, a girl's getting her ass beat, right? And you're the neighbor and shit, right? And you're like, yo, you slip her a, a card for a, like a um, a woman's shelter and shit, battered women's shelter, right? And then she goes to the battered woman's shelter, and there, because she's a hood rat, she gets into it with some people there and fucking kills one of the broads at the battered woman's shelter. Yeah, 
I could see you saying, yeah, okay, yeah, you tried to do a good thing and then you created something worse. But a lot of times, man, I don't think those people are doing it necessarily in, in bad faith. I think they're doing it in good faith a lot of times. It just turns out bad, you know? I don't think people are like, yo, let me go do this thing. Like, just look at how pitiful sons are, right? Sons are begging for reparations. They're crying about the police all the time. Could you think about a white guy? Think about a white guy. You're a white guy and shit. And you got, you know what I'm saying? And you got a great life. And you're hearing about how, like, everybody's been taken advantage of. And they, these people have been downtrodden in society. They got to work twice as hard. And society um, fucks them over. And you're just completely separated from that. And you want to fucking help. And you're like, yo, I want to help these people, man. I don't think anything is wrong with that. My yeah. thing about the woke people, no, my thing about the woke people is those ones that know that that the bullshit, that it's all bullshit. But they're using us as the political pawns. They're using us, you know what I'm saying, to, uh, to stick it to Whitey and shit. Like, like Fisherman claims the, the Jew screw does. But in that vein, those people I hate. But I really do. Black people are so fucking pitiful, man. We we present ourselves so pitifully. And I'm going to show you that in the in this Caitlin Clark discourse. We we have no problem presenting ourselves as a pitiful little puppies that need help and shit. Niggas is always asking for help. Uh, let me ask you a question. Would you accept reparations? Hell yeah. If they had a list of everybody who got it, would you want your name on the list? Oh, yeah, I take it. Yeah, I definitely take it. See, here's the thing. I know that most blacks would spend it like, um, you know, blacks would, you know, trinkets and, you know, um, things that depreciate as soon as you buy it and things that impress other sun people and make other sun people jealous and things that give them gratification in the moment. I know sons would do that. But I would be like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use it differently. I ain't going to lie. What I ain't going to lie. It would be, like yeah. be like the jab to me. I take pride in not taking that shit. I, I, I can't get it. I can't get it. My mother hates oh, it. I'm a whole bunch of niggas. <laughs> to be honest with you. If the niggas all get it, I wouldn't even want it. <laughs> that's cold, man. Uh, that's cold. Wow. Yeah, let, well, me, let me move like along. Let me, nah. let me do this. <laughs> let me do this story because I want to get move along, man. Um, let me just go and refresh everybody's mood. 18 year old Lorenzo Watson and 21 year old Kendrick Ray are locked up on $1 million bonds. Both are facing attempted murder charges in connection to an interstate shooting that left a father and his four children critically injured. Both appeared before a judge Thursday morning. Watson's appearance was reset since he did not have an attorney at the time. Attorney Brandon Hall is representing Ray, who has no prior convictions. Mr. Ray still has his constitutional right to be defended. According to court documents, the father was trying to merge onto I-240 from Mount Moriah Road but couldn't because a gray SUV wouldn't let him. Once he got over, the person behind the wheel of the SUV started driving erratically as it approached the victim's driver's side window. Reports say the victim rolled down his window and made a hand gesture asking the occupants why they were driving in such a manner. That's when the oh, SUV yeah, sure allegedly sure. made its way to the passenger side. Do you believe that, that these guys were being harassed by the guy with four kids in the car? I mean, I can believe, you know, almost anybody would do that in a moment of, you know, like you can't be doing that shit these days, honestly. You can't be getting yeah, crushed with people like saying. that. That's what I'm saying. Like, it does this. This is especially their version. if you got four kids in the car. So I don't know. This is their version. 
October, True. the person behind the wheel of the SUV started driving erratically as it approached the victim's driver's side window. Reports say the victim rolled down his window and made a hand gesture asking the occupants why they were driving in such a manner. That's when the SUV allegedly made its way to the passenger side of the victim's car and someone inside opened fire. After a police chase into Raleigh and shots fired at officers, two suspects were arrested, Ray and Watson. Hall says the affidavit does not clarify who fired the shots. If you're just a passenger in a vehicle, it doesn't mean you're guilty of committing a crime if another passenger in the vehicle decides to commit a crime. So that all that evidence will have to come to light in the later days. Hall waived his client's bail hearing due to a pending case in another court. According to the district attorney's office, Ray was out on bond for possessing a stolen handgun. The bond was set to $500. DA Steve Mulroy says Ray agreed to plead guilty to those charges and was due in court next month to enter that plea and hear his sentence. Since Ray has been rearrested, prosecutors say they plan to revoke his bond. Generally, as a protective move, the judge will just go ahead and grant that motion um, initially, and then we'll be having a hearing on that later on down the road. So it would be a, a waste of the court's time to do the bell hearing tomorrow. Ray is due back in court for the I-240 shooting on June 27th. Reporting from 201 Park, Virginia's leader, Tommy Truel, you would have had a big old necklace around that R-E-G. neck. New. I know. In the month land. Channel 3. Wow. Um, wow. Um, also tonight, we're learning new information about two separate highway shootings that created their own chaotic scenes yesterday. They happened along I-240, and police are telling us road rage is to blame for both of them. Uh, the worst we brought you is breaking news last night. During rush hour at I-240 in Poplar, the interstate had to be shut down for two hours. Four children were injured between the ages of two and eight, and their father was hurt as well. Now, R.J. Shakur spoke to one of the men who risked his own life to get help for that family. Jay, on top of everything else, we're also learning the car the shooter was driving was stolen? Jesus Christ. Yes, Richard, that's correct. That car was stolen. The shooting that took place at this portion of I-240 left four children and their father critically injured. But one man during the chaotic scene stepped up to get this family help, getting them to the hospital. I know where we just heard gunshots, a lot of gunshots on the, uh, on the expressway. So we had our uh, two sons in the back, so we told the kids to get down on the floor. Marcus Ross went from being a driver stuck in traffic Tuesday on I-240 to a hero helping another driver and his family, the latest victims of violence on Memphis interstates. We hopped out the car when we were seeing the man and his son getting out. He was screaming his son got shot, so we rushed to him and got the child and put the child in the car. We were trying to get him in the car, and he would say, um, he uh, had some more kids in the car. So we pulled the truck up and put the kids inside and put him inside. Ross aiding a father and his four children after they were shot in one of three violent incidents on the busy interstate in the past two weeks. Ross took a two-year-old, two, two three-year-olds, and an eight-year-old along with their father to the nearby Baptist Hospital. The shooting bringing into question the progress of the Tennessee Highway Patrol here in the Bluff City. I mean, for the past month or so, I've seen a lot of state troopers. They've been trying to recruit more people. Last November, Governor Bill Lee announced more than 50 Tennessee Highway troopers would be in Shelby County, many of them to stay here indefinitely to combat crime. We attempted to contact the agency today, but no success. We do know THP was expected to bolster Operation Grizzly. The operation essentially brings in state troopers to handle traffic incidents to help reduce traffic deaths in the city of Memphis, as well as cut crime. But like I say, it takes a village. I mean, if they can get more on the highway. Um, it takes a fucking army police, division. It takes a village. We don't want to say stupid shit like that. It takes a village to raise your fucking kids. And then they're the least thing, the least group that's anything like a village. Like of all the groups, the way they treat each other, the way their social contract, their trust is nothing like a village. Unbelievable, man. Um, Maybe an African village. Yeah, facts, man. Um facts. Um let's see this. Um 
Let's see this 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 Caitlin Clark shit. Hey, uh, before you run, what do you think about that feminine hairstyle on it? Permanent hairstyle. The feminine hairstyle. Look how feminine that hairstyle is. I I think you know I I don't know no, those hairstyles, braids and stuff like that. I don't think that that's feminine. I wouldn't get out and find that as feminine because, like, it's just he had a tent. Sun man shit. Yeah, yeah, sun man. He had only tail in the tent though. Huh? Yeah, I mean, it's still dreads and stuff. You know, I don't, I 